Good morning, and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Folani. Um, well, uh, this morning, of course, the subsidy removal thing is still very much in the air, but not very much center stage anymore. Uh, NLC has seen its way uh, to announcing, uh, you know, why they will not, indeed, as they had indicated, you know, do uh, commence the world, nationwide strike today. Okay, but it was about the it, it was about the removal of subsidy, but the removal of subsidy doesn't stay on its own. It, it it doesn't exist on its own. There are other things. There are things like the inflation rate, single exchange uh, window that the president spoke spoke about, uh, and then the subsidy thing. What is the interlink between all of these things? Well. I'm delighted that our guest this morning is an economist, he's a banker, uh, but then perhaps he's most widely known as a former governor of Lagos State. A big, a big, deputy. Yeah, for, for, a former deputy governor of Lagos State in the, uh, if that goes back to the Tinubu era, uh, he was deputy governor between 2003 and 2007, Mr. Sem, Mr. Femi Pedro. Uh, Femi, thank you very much for coming on the program. My pleasure. For making time for us. Thank you, my pleasure. Indeed. Um, so, as I was saying, I was just thinking about it, and who better to ask than an economist and a banker uh, about what is the interlink between uh, this whole matter of subsidy removal, uh, single exchange window that the president spoke about, uh, job creation, and, um, you know, all of that. It seems to be a package that most Nigerians are concentrating only at the moment on you know, the, uh, the subsidy removal. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I must uh, give it to President uh, Bola Metinongo. Uh, he's a very intelligent man. <clears throat> he's indeed an economist. He understands the nature of the Nigerian economy. And he exemplified this in his inaugural speech. Uh, he brought out clearly his priorities. He started with security. Then he went on to talk about the macroeconomic situation of Nigeria. Mm. He touched on inflation, bringing down inflation, reducing interest rates, creating one million jobs as he had promised, bringing power, affordable power supply. Well, he hasn't quite created the million jobs, but he, he has indicated the way, that yes, it is it may, going to be done. Yes. Yes. Affordable power supply to every household in Nigeria. And then the clincher. He mentioned the for a subsidy mm. remover. Unfortunately, everybody concentrated on the removal of for subsidy. And he left out all the goodies that he mentioned in his inaugural speech. And it was the for subsidy remover that manifested itself the following day when pump prices went up. And there seems to be some mini crisis being created in form of shortages. Uh, I'm happy that the kind of leader he is, very effective one for that matter, he swung into action. And against the threat of labor, he had doused detention. Labor has agreed to meet with government. A lot of interventions have been spread out to ameliorate the suffering of the masses. Mm. And let me come to that very briefly. Okay. The removal of subsidies is in the best interest of the nation. And the best interest of the poor, low-income Nigerians. Yes. But when you say, uh, well, sorry to interrupt, yeah. when you say in the interest of this segment of the society that is close to uh, President Tinubu's heart as well, yes. uh, the ordinary Nigerian, even indeed the poor Nigerian, um, in Lagos here, for example, it is higher elsewhere. When petrol has gone to 488, when you can get it uh, at that, Vis-a-vis -vis the poor, ordinary person, 488 per litre, is, is, it's a pretty penny. So when you say it is in their best interest, how do you mean? Yeah, you have to look at it from the other perspective. Okay. Subsidy comes at a cost. Petrol selling for 165 naira per litre, as against 440, 480 naira per litre, there's a difference of about 325 naira mm -hmm. per litre. Mm -hmm. Who is paying for that? It's like they are giving you 325 naira per liter, but they are taking it away from you mm. elsewhere. This is the same quantum of money that could have gone into the Federation account and could have been spent 
on so many variables, education, health, infrastructure, name it. But we have been deprived, 2023 alone, over 6 trillion naira was to be expended on subsidy up to the middle of the year. And in addition to that, many people didn't know this. Subsidy payments, as we speak now, is illegal. The Petroleum Industry Act was passed into law in 2021. It totally deregulated the downstream sector of the oil industry, which means that paying subsidy itself is no longer an issue. And it's not even legal, as you said. Yes. Is that why there was no provision for subsidy? Exactly. Actually, there is a misnomer to say that there was no provision or there was provision. Because the subsidy payment comes from the federation accounts. It's not from the federal government. It comes from the money that is being shared to states and local governments. Mm -hmm. NNPC says crude oil, ants dollars. Rather than pay that dollar into the federation account, he uses that dollar to pay the differential between the cost of imported uh, PMS and what is selling at the pump price. So that differential is the subsidy. So the money doesn't go into the federation account. It goes into subsidy. So it's like paying for one single product at the expense of so many others. So it's what economists call complete and total misallocation of resources. Okay. Okay. So President Tinubu did the right thing by making that pronouncement, even though it's already written. But let's swallow the bitter pill. When we were young, if you have malaria, your parents <laughs> will give you nevaquin. Remember, it's very bitter. If you don't take nevaquin, malaria will kill you. Yes. But take nevaquin, it will be bitter in your mouth. You will yeah. not like it, but it will cure your malaria. And so this is the nevaquin that we require. However, let me say this. The mixing point that we're not focusing on is those other aspects that President Nubu mentioned in his speech. Okay. This economy needs to be energized urgently. And energizing this economy means that we, are all, we all have to be more productive. Because I was going to... We have to work. Mm. We have to create a 24-hour economy. We have to attract investors, industries, manufacturing, small businesses. We have to attract them into our economy. Because I was going to ask that, look, uh, how, how do we, uh, one of the reasons we've heard economists talk about the way you know, the price of the dollar is going to come down is if our own productive capacity increases. Mm -hmm. Now, I was going to ask, is it internal productive capacity and manufacturing capacity or from wherever we can get it? From, wh from, from, from wherever we can get it. Because the, people, the, the fund, the, the, to let, me, let me just you know, try and explain something sure. in layman uh, point of view. The economy stands on three um, legs, and they are very important all over the world. The cost of money, interest rate, mm -hmm. the value of money, inflation rate, and the value of foreign exchange because we rely on imported products. Those three prices are very connected. And today, our inflation rate is 22%. Our interest rate is higher than 22%. Our exchange rate is much higher. Our dollar, our naira is weak. All these three combined to discourage foreigners from bringing money into Nigeria. Because any dollar they bring in Nigeria within a year is devalued by 22% if inflation rate remains the same. Mm. And when they are repatriating their profits, if exchange rates is worsened or remains the same, they are repatriating with a weaker currency. So they are holding back. And so President Nubu has said he's going to tackle these three prices. That is a fundamental. For instance, this uh, removal of forest subsidy. In dollar term, Fuel has moved from 30 cents to $1.05. That's the impact of the removal of subsidy. However, it's more impactful in Naira terms because our Naira at official rate is 460. Imagine if the Naira had remained at 120 to a dollar the way it was in 2021. We'll not be talking of 488 Naira at the fuel pump. 
we'll be talking about 120 naira. So that differential was caused more by the value, weakening value of the naira. So the problem actually centered on the foreign exchange situation. That's why the statement I'm going to encourage the central bank to work towards unified exchange rates is a very powerful statement. And I know President Tinubu very well is going to work towards this. If we can bring down the value of the dollar against the naira, strengthen our naira mm -hmm. by 200, 300 percent in the next four years, mm -hmm. this economy will bounce back. You know, it, it's this economy, and it's possible. It has happened before. It has happened in many other countries before. It's all the only solution to that is our productive capacity as a nation. When you go into the street today. You see able-bodied young men working, not working. They're walking around. They're looking for a job. They can work if they see opportunity. Just imagine, just, just dream that President Nubu is able to persuade Toyota to open a plant in Ekpe. Mm. And Toyota comes, brings in like 10 billion US dollars. That is increase in dollar supply in the economy. A plant is built. We have to employ a lot of people and train them to produce Toyota cars. We don't have to import Toyota cars anymore. So the money we are using to import Toyota cars stayed in Nigeria. So our, our Naira strength is again. Immediately Toyota uh, manufacturing plant lands in a pair. Battery manufacturers, we move close. Michelin and Dunlop, we come back. Say, we have to supply Toyota. A new life of economic activity is created. And in his manifesto, he emphasized, I want to bring back all the major brands into Nigeria. This is the panacea for all our problems. What? We don't need to look far. So let's leave the issue of subsidy. Let's face frontally the economy. Once the economy is stronger, the Naira strengthens, price of uh, petrol at uh, the pump will come down. There was a time in 2021 when international price of oil fell from $100 to about $20. A lot of people did not notice. But petrol price in the pump went down. Okay. Went down. Because they didn't have to pay subsidy. They were not using subsidy. But immediately after COVID and the uh, Ukraine and Russia war started, prices jumped up. And we started feeling the impact again. Okay. But more importantly is the value of the Naira against the dollar. That is the key variable in our economy. Everything around us, the furniture we are sitting on, the television we are watching, the car we ride, the petrol, the air conditioner, the fan, the food, much of the food we eat, are all imported to Nigeria. So, and he mentioned it in his speech that I want to promote import substitution and export. We've been saying it for many years. It's not the first person. But this man, President Nubu, will do it. Is determined. You understand the linkages of these variables. And um, wh wh when you look at um, what we were reported to be servicing our debt with, that's almost, they said up to 95%. Yes, 96% of, our, of our earnings. How does that work? 96%, yes. even just 4% with which to do what? That's the situation, that's the situation we, we, we are, we are now. now. Borrowing to pay salaries, to run the government. <laughs> to do every other aspect and it's unsustainable actually the subsidy regime is a monster a huge drain on our resources i'm even surprised that it has stayed this long and you know people have tried to confront it but it has felt to be dangerous because there are so many uh, rent seekers uh, arbitrage was among uh, the mar the former mar yeah. i don't remember he spoke at length about yeah, this uh, I, I understand yes i think we must not lose sight of one aspect and i will admit that it's the poor among us more than the rest of us because already there's inflation they are struggling wages have not increased over time. So their purchasing power has reduced. They are poorer. All Nigerians have been poorer, really, over the past several years because income has not risen mm. correspondingly with the level of inflation. You remember, he also said that he was going to take a look at the minimum wage. Yes. So I'm happy when I saw the, uh, the statements released between TUC, NSC, and the federal government. And they listed some of the interventions, not palliative mm -hmm. interventions. Mm -hmm. 
There's, and that's by the way, is there a difference? Because I heard Daily Alaki uh, be emphatic on that word. Oh, yeah, uh, I didn't even know that. Yeah, he, he no, there's said a huge difference. Intervention. There, not palliative, necessarily palliative palliative. is like uh, uh, calling people come and take bag of rice. We are giving you, you know, intervention is government policy to bridge to stem the tide of suffering, mm -hmm. and it oh, comes right. in different forms. For instance. In that agreement, they mention something, they call it compression liquefied gas system. The plan, this was signed in 2021 between the Buhari administration and marketers and the, and the NSC that over 2 million cars could be converted from using petrol to gas. Mm -hmm. and, so, and gas is much cheaper if compressed into liquefied form. It will just be like in form of a cylinder it will put at the back of the boot of the car and it will be connected to the engine and it will work. And that will bring down prices of uh, transportation considerably. But it was left undone. But this agreement said to be looked into and it will be handled. So these interventions are temporary. The permanent intervention is for President Tinubu as he has promised mm. to energize the economy. Mm. Mm. Once the economy is energized and there's activity everywhere, we want to see, oh, when I was a banker, I was a credit officer, I had many customers in Lagos who were manufacturers. I was in co head of corporate finance. I was dealing with the likes of Michelin, Dunlop, Aswani Textiles, Niken Tex, Mobo, Chevron, these were our customers, and they were manufacturing and producing. We were producing air conditioners in Nigeria. We were producing battery in Ibadan Exide. We were producing yeah. um, gas cooker and fridge. The company was in Isolo. Even when I got married, I bought my fridge and my gas cooker made in Nigeria from Isolo. I went to the factory, I paid, and I picked it up. We want that back. Mm -hmm. And it is not impossible. What we need to do is solve those three variables bring down inflation bring down interest rates, and strengthen the Naira. And how do we do that? It's a vicious circle. It is. We have... They're all interconnected. Yes. President Zimbabwe has promised power. Power is a key variable. If we have 24-7 power, we have solved 40% of our problem. And that is, a, is that doable? Is that a doable? Because 24-7, it seems like to the ordinary Nigerian, Nigerian like, like a dream, considering what we've gone through just, over the past. Just year. like President Sinubu being president, like a dream. <laughs> now he's there. He's going to actualize those dreams. Mm, mm. He will make it happen. Now, marketers... Uh, so let me also say something. Okay. Um, I'm happy that he's president. Because he's starting off with... A positive vibe, the goodwill is good. The same subsidy that the previous governments could not remove, Jonathan tried it, immediately reversed itself. And President Buhari for eight years could not do it. It looked like politically suicidal, but it's a very sound economic policy. It is, and uh, dare I say... And, and the, the average Nigerian initially, you know, started complaining, and then the same people have turned around to say, Labour, where were you all these years? Exactly. When Naira redesign was a mess, you didn't do anything, you know, let this government start well, let give them time, they will solve the problem. That is the positive goodwill. Every new government needs it. And it worked for Tinubu. It will yeah. work for him. It, it, because, it, it, because, because he's saying the right things and he's doing the right things. And people in the street that would have been, you know, that are really bearing the brunt of this yeah. are saying that it's tight, it's tough, but we have to manage it. I mean, people yes. are saying this. Yeah. Another, another thing I want to say is that, yes, subsidy payment is national, but the pain is local. Every part of the country. That is why the state governments are a key player in this scenario. The state governments are key players. They have to move fast to help the people. The, who? The state governments. State governments. State government. We are not focusing on state government. We are focusing on federal government. But state governments have a huge role to play. How is that? And, oh, transportation. Let's start okay. with that. Okay. Look at Lagos. 
uh, Governor Sanwulu has started the blue and red, red line. All it needs now is additional funding to expand it and grow it. If 40% of negotiations can move using the race system, the issue of fuel crisis will abate. And so many other interventions are local. So this is what all governors need to be very creative. Very creative. You know, in Not only that, if properly managed, the gains from this subsidy is going to devolve down to the state level. Don't forget I said earlier on that the money for subsidy has been taken out from the federation account, not from federal government budget. So it's not only the federal government that has been bearing the brunt, the state and local government has been bearing the brunt. It has, been, it has affected what they are getting as federal allocation. So with the removal of this, more allocation will go to the states and local government. And we want to plead to all state governments, all the state, state governments, the inflow from this subsidy removal should be channeled towards programs and policies that will help the poor and the masses. Indeed. Right? Nigeria needs relief. And like I said, wages are dwindling. Jobs are not easy to find. People are poorer and they are paying more for gas, for electricity, for recharge cards, for telephone bills, for so, so, for so many things. So, so they so need help. You, and, and it's a very big job. Remember, the, uh, I cited uh, the former Emir of Kano uh, who said that um, Actually, he doesn't, he doesn't envy whoever is going to take over from Buhari uh, because of the myriad of jobs that needed attending to. Um, the nature of our program is that it's interactive. So, uh, Reverend Dominic has called in. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Chibiori. Good morning to uh, Mr. Pedro. Uh, very gentleman. You are still the same. I know him since 2004. Uh, you may not remember me now. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Now, you already let me say this. Sure. Subsidy must be, must be removed. Subsidy must be removed. Subsidy must be removed. You know, why did I say three times? It seems like if you don't believe that, you're a black cat in Nigeria. But you know, let me say this. You know, I supposed to be a middle class in this nation. I think I can boast of that. I bought 10 liters to 5,000 naira. You know, I sent my personal assistant to the east. He has not come back because he went a week ago. With 15,000 naira, if you can hear me, can you hear me? Yes, uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Although now, they can help us a bit, give us a bit more volume one. upstairs there. Mm -hmm. Carry on, please. My, my best assistant went to the East last week with a bus, 15,000 naira. And I asked him to come back because we have a budget in the church. Now it's paid 25,000 naira to come back from the East to the back to Lagos. Your Mr. Pedro, I know him very well. Before being a deputy governor, he was a very a wealthy man as a good banker. He can afford to buy 500 naira a liter. Your who makes the provision for me? I don't work for government. The, the TVC can make provision for you. I don't work for government. Millions of us who doesn't work for government, who makes policy for us? And we are many of us who are not going to receive minimum wage. Number two, your let this be in the mind of everybody. There are some states today who have not paid 30,000 minimum wage. For instance, if you increase our wages to 100,000, how would this state pay? We have been borrowing money already to pay 30,000 naira minimum wage. Now we are going to increase salary maybe from 30,000 to 70 to 100. And for the past three, four years, some states have not paid 30,000. You are listening to me. Somebody has come to this studio. Listen to me. There is no nation in the world that has no subsidy. I have a sister in the UK. He lost the husband three years ago. I called her yes, a, a week ago. I said, how do you manage it? For a long time, he has no job. He said, you can pay me stipend. And my three children go to school free. And the medical school in UK is free. What is, what is subsidy in Nigeria? Is it water? Is it electricity? Is it education? Every nation has subsidy. This subsidy will buy us up to hard. Because everything has gone up. You can't buy a loaf of bread now. How, my daughter cannot go to work this morning. Because I wanted to go to work at Trayvon. What kind of system is this? We must have put politics first before we move some CD. Thank Good morning. you. Thank, Thank you very much, Reverend Dominic. Yeah, he made a valid point. Yeah, he made, yeah, he made valid point. In fact, one point that he has made is that even the intervention that has been announced mm. is focused on salary announced for those who work for government and those who are earning wages. 
What about the millions of Nigerians who are not salary and also who work for private sector, yeah. minimum wage will not affect So what about them? And they are employed. I've told you, fundamentally, subsidy is really the minor issue in Nigeria. I'm telling you, fundamentally, the economy is safe. This man complaining, if the economy is booming, he will not complain. He will not even remember the removal of subsidy anymore. He will not remember the removal of subsidy anymore. He only has touch on is looking at the subsidy as that is making him poorer. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Before the subsidy, he was already poor. Do you understand? The subsidy just had there to eat. Mm. So why instead of tackling what had made him poorer, let's tackle what made him poor. Do you understand? Okay, I do, I go with the, yeah. origin, the origin of the, the origin problem. of the problem is the economy. The base is weak. The base has to be strengthened. And that is what is yes, being worked on Yes, President Tinubu has ten fingers to work. One finger, this subsidy issue. Second finger, the petroleum sector has to bring sanity to it. Third finger, he has to work on unified exchange rates, strengthen the value of the Naira, give confidence to those who are bringing money into Nigeria and Nigerians abroad in diaspora wants to inflow money in and those who want to invest in Nigeria. When they see a stable exchange rate regime, a unified exchange rate, they will be happy to bring more money. More dollar in the economy, economy will strengthen. Industrialize Nigeria. Bring in manufacturing, attract them to come back. Let them see that this country of over 200 million people has a lot of leverage. And let's make our people work. We have, they say 60, 70% of Nigerians are young, below age of 35. They are energetic. They have brains. They are smart. All they need is opportunity to apply themselves. Let's make them work. Indeed. Let's make them work. Let me, uh, I, uh, Power. That can list them. He has, oh, oh, okay, he said there are more. Yeah, uh, because uh, he listed them in his in, 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 speech. In, uh, please, uh, please carry on, because yes. uh, Mr. Yakub, I'll be right with you. Oh, okay. But <laughs> but you know, you were just you, you got halfway. Yes. Uh, these are essentials yes. that are going to be attacked. Right. Those are his priorities. And those are the priorities yes, so that have already been listed. Power. Mm -hmm. And he said, ah, inflation rates. I'm going to bring it down from double digits. He said this. Read really this thing. He said interest rate. I want to provide, I want to build a credit driven economy where Mr. Yori Folani and this young man sitting down here don't have to wait until he has all the money in the world to build a house to build it. or to buy a car. Yes. You know, everybody who lives in the United Kingdom or Switzerland or you, France you or Germany knows that you walk into a bank, you fill out a form, and then you drive a car out of the lot. And they will, be paying, they will be taking it away from your salary every month. We can't do that here now because the interest rates the banks are charging are will kill you. Mm. And why is interest rates high? Because inflation is high. Okay. And the owners of money must hand above the level, above the, the rate of inflation. So all this put together, the president has a lot of work on his hand and he has, is the one that has emphasized it. He has promised us, I'm supremely confident that he will deliver. Okay. Mr. Yakub, thank you very much for holding on. Please go ahead now. Yeah, uh, you're a good morning, sir. Yeah. And then, uh, good morning to uh, your guest. Uh, if you're, I think uh, labor, labor in this country has failed us several times. And then, uh, this time around, they are not going to follow them. Because as uh, Reverend Dominic said earlier, all of us cannot, cannot work in as a civil servant. As far as I'm concerned, I'm a businessman. I, I do my thing in my loan. So, labor, cannot, labor is fighting for its organization, not me. And in fact, although you personally, if you're in authority, say maybe you're a member of a labor, but I'm not <laughs> Now, if labor says that they should increase their minimum, that is what is going to cause inflation again because every market will know that labor is not increasing, they, they are not giving them more money. <laughs> I agree, sir. Now, this particular labor that we are talking about, who are those people that do the uh, turn around maintenance in our own and our refinery? All this way, turn around maintenance, they are paying lots of billions of dollars, and then the, the refinery does not work optimally. So, they are not coming to tell us now that they are going on strike. Go on strike based on what? See? If you are the subsidy of the team, must go. Look at our labor country today. How much are they selling the, the, the petroleum price on our labor country here? Yeah. Because Nigeria is subsidized the petroleum that go all, to, all, all the way to Niger, the Republic, Cameroon, and all those areas. See, Nigeria has started adulting, 
For example, I'm planning to even buy a bicycle now. Because of that, some area that I don't even need to take my car to where I've been doing before. But now, mm. I've been trying to buy a bicycle so that I can't be able to use a bicycle. Mr. Adi, let me shock you. Mm. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yakub, for...